everyone. Thanks for clocking in to Becoming a Better Nurse YouTube. I'm Rebecca. And Aaron. Together, we like to offer ideas, conversations, and solutions to help educate, elevate, and empower nurses. So I want to talk about pointers on how to get the shift started. And I wanted to ask you, Aaron, how did you like getting your shift started? Let me see. Well, definitely come in like 10 minutes late after seven o'clock you know just to make sure everybody is on what's grand the, entrance yeah grand entrance and that the you assignments know, fashionably are late set. Um, so you have to make sure that the assignments are already set and once they're set and you come in late and people see you come in late then complain complain that you're <laughs> complain that you're assigned you don't like your assignment nope i refuse to take it you make sure you know and you, and you don't let up i mean if they say hey the assignment's already made you don't care no you don't care you make sure everybody hears that you don't like the assignment and you make sure it's changed. Yeah, and then you know what? When you're late, they're definitely ready to give you a report, so you know you're not going to be waiting around. For yeah, yeah. Make them once you're late. Make the nurse that's going to give you a report wait a little bit longer <laughs> because you got to get your stuff ready. You know, you got to get mentally prepared, physically prepared. You know, take a couple of deep yoga breaths, and then you know, just make them wait. Even if they give you a nasty eye look and they're just staring at you, just just relax it's this is your calm. world this is your world don't let anybody tell you otherwise okay stay calm <laughs> you know they have to know you've got things to do before you come to work yeah work, and, you got more in life than just work and don't forget before you come to work late and before you report you have to pick up your starbucks yes oh you god know, it has to got, be hot and ready they, and well i you know i see a lot of I, the iced coffee <laughs> you have to make sure that these people know why you were late <laughs> You know, you didn't come late for no reason. You know, there were issues at home. No, you needed to get that Starbucks. Yeah. The people need to know that you ha you're a, you ha you're a caffeine addict. And your priorities. You yeah, pr priorities, people. Priorities. <laughs> and so we come today to let you guys know that <clears throat> there's a lot of things you should do prior to shift. Whether you're a new nurse or an older nurse, we're going to give you some really good tips on what you should do at the beginning of shift just to get your day going. And obviously, the things we were saying at the beginning were all jokes. They or do were, happen. Or, or were they? <laughs> they? They do happen, but um, there would be times, if it happened all the time, there would hopefully there'd be done something done about it. That's just not right. No yeah, one wants right. that. No Nobody wants, wants that. that, but it happens all the time. I see it all the time happening. And man, God bless you for, for being patient and not saying anything, but sometimes you just need to speak up because some people will abuse the system. But let's get started. The first thing you should know about getting ready for a shift is that there is a system in place. There's always, the shift usually works in a very uniform way. You come in, you get report, you um, look your patients up, or you, you figure out, organize yourself with the uh, medications. You go about your day, and random things happen, and then shift ends, you follow up with some things, and uh, you give report and you're done. But at the beginning, you're setting yourself up for the next 12 hours and you want to plan for success you want to plan plan not to fail or if not you will fail <laughs> plan to stay organized i think that's a big one um when you're starting your shift what i find most helpful for me was i had a um i like to get the assignment and had i had a system of how i got report so some people used um, a report sheet and it was um photocopied and we used it all the time but it helped keep you consistent with your head to toe assessment and we're in critical care so that was why we did that um, head to toe assessment and that way you, you kind of could tell what you didn't cover in the report when there was a blank space you didn't do the GIGU you knew that you needed to address foleys or you know bowel movements things like that so then it keeps you organized you have a history you have the H&P you have goals things that you should do and so I found a system where I liked I had it written out and I could cover everything because you use that to add to your day because then you use it at the end of your day Correct. when you're giving report so it's a very um very easy way to keep everything on track i know paper and pencil sounds really outdated to some of you newer nurses but that is good it keeps it you keep it in your pocket when people are calling you on the phone and they ask about the patient and you have to look and you get your notes out it's a lot quicker than going back to your computer especially if you don't have your computer in your in your you know um, and right in front of you because you, you're going to be really busy you're not you're running around you're not always at your computer you're doing other things so yeah let me touch on that because basically you're saying getting a report and, and get an organized report yeah. and i like the head to toe assessment you can do that obviously definitely do that in ICU on the floor it's a little bit uh, more difficult but you definitely want to get a head to toe assessment because god forbid you need to call a rabbit on somebody and you have no idea what their neuro status was like prior to your shift because you, you didn't get reported on their neuro status you know it's very important yeah um 
so I think furthermore, I, I wouldn't use a pen and pencil, pe uh, pencil just because I'm more of a pen guy, but I would um, organize things and on the side I would put what's new maybe in a different color pen. You don't have to, but you can also mark new new things and new things have changed and just mark those out throughout the day of so you can let the next shift know what has happened and what's been going on. But I would always start also with reporting. I would ask I would ask, so tell me what brought the patient in and what the plan is going forward and then after that get into the system. Just to, just so you have the, the so in the back of your head there is a macro game plan of this patient. What brought him in? What's the plan? And now let's go into the details. Mm -hmm. I used to like what, what I would ask what made them come to the ICU sometimes if they were a transfer in. I would like to know that. Now, it pre we touched we would touch on that in, H in the history of the patient typically. Correct. But sometimes, the obviously knowing the plan for the day shift, I used to try to get that plan sometimes for the report so that they knew what to ask for, what mm -hmm. to look for, you know, their goals for the day. But at um, on nighttime, your goal, you had to know like what was pending, what needed to be addressed, if there were family coming in later, you know, um, all those things. I find that was the most important part of report because as a seasoned nurse, I would get a lot of the H&P and a lot of the extra like little things like the IVs, the Foley, things like that you could actually get in the chart. You didn't have to get report about that. So I would... I would sometimes come in and look that patient up, and so all they had to do was tell me the stuff that you that you aren't charting, like the family. This is the member, family member who's calling all the time. This is what we're waiting for. This is the patient's um, plan for the next day, or you know those kind of like yeah. out of the ordinary stuff that you would report. Like they have a wound on their um, butt that was this or that, or you know the lotions that you used. You know that was the alternation of stuff. That was the kind of stuff you would talk about. Time to clock out. Thanks for listening. If you like what you hear, please hit the like button and subscribe. Stat. Follow us on Instagram. You can find us on Becoming a Better Nurse. Until next time.